And welcome back. In our last video, we left off with getting our exhaust manifolds rebolted to our cylinders. Because again, we're going to attempt to put a um, passenger side cylinder came out with the exhaust manifold installed. We'll repeat it. The driver side one, just to recap, if you remember, we took the exhaust manifold off because it was easier to get the cylinder head out of that space without wrangling with the exhaust manifold at the same time. But we're going to give it a shot when we go to put it back in. We're going to see if we can get it back in as one assembly and save ourselves some grief with not having to get that exhaust manifold in and then especially torqued in position. Uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, just grab a silver sharpie here and put a line on our cam bolt. It's going to be kind of hard to see. Yeah, you can kind of see it a little bit. There we go. And now just let us know that we did torque down our cam to phaser bolt, which according to the specification sheet calls for 72 foot pounds. Um, I did take that bolt out. And just a key tip for you, when you have your chain and everything everywhere you want it, if you have to take this bolt back out like I did, because remember we only had it in finger tight because we were gonna torque it later. If you pull your pin out and put your tension on your chain, that'll hold enough tension on this chain to hold this sprocket in place when you take that bolt out otherwise the sprocket could easily just go and, and fall off and you know possibly cause some damage uh but uh so we went ahead and pulled our pin put tension on our chain and just backed our bolt out i cleaned up the threads a little bit removed as much oil as i could uh, because remember we lubed the cam shop uh cam shaft sorry ahead of time before putting in the engine so those oil passages a little bit of oil had seeped onto the threads of the bolt so i cleaned that off and put a little bit of blue loctite on the very end of it and threaded and uh torqued it in um, if you're having problems with the engine spinning on you when you're trying to torque that bolt um, if in our case because we had the inspection plate uh, for the transmission removed and I'll actually crawl underneath and show that to you in case you haven't seen the inspection plate on a on a 2500 with a six speed although I'm assuming any automatic would look pretty similar to this you'll see the lower part of the inspection plate on that transmission we removed when we were taking the oil pan out so all I did was just take the end of a pry bar and stick it between the bell housing on the bottom here uh, and the uh, in the flex plate that you see there just to keep that flex plate from turning and that was enough to hold the engine in position while we uh, went ahead and got the, the torque on that bolt but with that being said what I'm going to do next is clean the mating surfaces of the cylinder heads up uh, to get those ready to put the new seals on and what I'm going to use for that I'm going to try, I'm gonna try um, a little bit of brake clean uh, and some red scotch brite and I'm going to shove some shop towels and the oil passages and the coolant passages and a little bit into the cylinders just to keep any debris from getting in there once we have it all kind of tweaked up and looking how we want it to look then we'll go ahead and get the first gasket in and like I said, we'll we'll attempt to do the driver side one first since we know that's going to be the blunt of the issue. But I'm going to go ahead and pause the camera here. And uh, we're going to get those mating surfaces on the block cleaned up. And I'll bring you back. Talk to you in a bit. So I just want to show you this is the passenger side cylinder head. This is before we go to clean any of the mating surface up. And yes, and just can remember from a previous video, we've already cleaned up the, the tops of our pistons. But uh, like I said, there's not much it looks like needs to be done on that mating surface as far as where the seal sets. But this is a nice before shot, and I'll, I'll bring you back for the after. Talk to you in a bit. Hey, and welcome back. So as you can see, we've just kind of lightly gone over the um, the cylinder head here. And the bottoms of those cylinders, you can kind of see the rust line versus where the gasket surface is at. And although the gasket surface isn't perfectly clean, it isn't a clean, flat, shiny, but uh, as you can see, we got the majority of all the uh, old black sealant 
off of where it's going to meet and I may concentrate a bit more around these right hand side cylinder ports before we put the gasket on because you can see it's got a little bit of black residue kind of still hanging around the edges of those so I'll concentrate on those a bit more and then we'll do the other side but again you can kind of see where the rust line's at versus where the gasket mating surface is at and then before we put the gaskets on and we get ready to seat the head in place uh, I'll wipe the, all the cylinders down with oil again rotate the engine a few times wipe them down again and just make sure that every all the cylinder walls and everything stay you know nice and coated and nice and lubricated because uh, it might be a while yet even once we have the cylinder heads on before we can actually uh, start things up but with that said I'm gonna scrub a little bit on the uh, the driver's side block and then I'll bring you back thank you much and welcome back so we went through both sides of the block and we've scrubbed it down and removed the large uh, deposits now you'll see some remnants in here of where the gasket used to sit and you know, it's perfectly fine I'm not looking to make it a completely silver block just get the, the big blobs of stuff off which as you can see it looks a far cry better uh, than what it did and uh, just to show you as I was doing that to keep the contamination to a minimum uh, because we do have exposed oil passages and water passages. I was just using shop towels to kind of block everything off as we were cleaning. Uh, and when I'm using those Scotch-Brite pads, and I'll show you, I use the red ones again because they're not as abrasive as the green. But I've seen plenty of people use the green ones. Plenty of individuals use the white or green 3M Rolock discs. Uh, and they all seem perfectly fine. Um... But again, to kind of keep the contamination down to a minimum, I was just using shop towels to, like these blue ones here, just to kind of keep shoved inside the cylinder bores. And as I stated, when we got done, I wiped all the exposed cylinder bores down, rotated the engine a little bit, wiped, uh, kept wiping the cylinder bores down until each cylinder uh, made a full stroke. Um, and you can kind of see some of the crud that I was able to get out of those cylinder wells and again I've wiped these down before but just to give you an idea of kind of some of the stuff that settles down into those exposed cylinder heads as you're working whether you realize it or not now some of this is carbon and that's natural it's going to be there the very top of the cylinders in this engine case is actually you know sits inside the combustion area so there's a small ring of com uh, carbon right at the top of the cylinders and some of that carbon's breaking loose but some of this is also the dirt and other items as even though I'm being careful um, just some of the debris that was coming off of the block at the, as I was cleaning up that mating surface so just kind of want to show you that uh, you know dirt's inevitable it, it will get in places even though you don't want it to but that's kind of what it, what some of the towels look like after we wipe the, the cylinder bores down and you may not be able to see it too well in the camera but if I shine some light in there you might be able to see the sheen from the oil uh, from us wiping the, the cylinder bores down so much, but I mean, no harm, no foul. I'd rather there be some label of protection there rather than nothing. And it will mean that the engine more than likely is going to smoke a little bit until it can, when we first start it up, until it can burn all that oil off, but uh, yeah, it'll be fine. So what we're going to do next is go ahead and get our head gaskets in place and then prep for placing our cylinder heads. Now these are the head gaskets. These are Mopar head gaskets. They came in the upper engine seal kit. Uh, I've compared these to the ones that came off the vehicle and you know they're they are made of the exact same material it looks like. You know, you can see the part number down there, which is etched into the let's see if I can get you in there and get rid of the shadow at the same time here. There we go. Hopefully we can see that. And they are marked left and right side. Now from what I can see, the writing side is the side that faces up. Now, some of these gaskets, when you buy them, will have left and right, and it'll also say cylinder head or cylinder block or the word up to kind of help you orient the gasket. Now, in this case, it doesn't. It just says this is the left-hand side, this is the right-hand side. And if you're in a situation like I am and you're not entirely sure, if you look at the original gasket, 
which this is the original head gasket for the left hand side you'll notice you don't see any rust on this side and this is the side that would have been facing the cylinder head but if we flip it over you'll see some rust witness marks along the bottom where it doesn't seal up against the cylinder head and you've got a couple areas here right around these uh, upper water passages so what that tells me is that this side is the side that was facing down meaning the side with the writing in our case left hand side along with some barcode and other information here is the side that's going to be facing up so that's the direction I'm going to get these installed into the engine and uh, what they'll do is you'll see the two dowel pins on either side of the top of the head one here one on the other side the gaskets are just going to press in place and sit on those dowel pins and those dowel pins are also going to be your guide from when you're putting the cylinder heads back on it'll just kind of get them onto those dowel pins and those dowels will help hold those cylinder heads at least until you can get one bolt in there and get it started and you know get a definitive hold on it so the interesting thing is going to be is wrestling these cylinder heads with the exhaust manifolds installed and getting them into that area back there especially that driver's um side there because it's just you know it's it's a lot tighter and a little bit limiting space especially with this upper wiring harness being in our way and that's about as picked up as i can get it based on where it's tie wrapped i can't go any higher because it's got some electrical connections that come off of this harness go around and, and hook into either the starter or other items on the side of the block uh, so I, I don't have much more slack in that uh, wiring harness to move it up anymore but I think what I'm gonna do is probably put some kind of a piece of lumber again across the center well I'm probably not gonna put it across the center I may try to put it up here somewhere and just give me a resting spot that I can rest that cylinder head on and then get myself situated in the engine compartment enough to where I can uh, get in there and, and get that cylinder head on uh, without scratching uh, the surface of the new gasket because you, you definitely don't want to put any gouges in it let alone a gouge or deep enough scratch in an area where you've got this sealant and then it not sealing because you can see these are multi-layer gaskets but it's got this sealant material that's already on the edges of this gasket where it needs to seal. So what you're doing is you need to avoid gouging this gasket or especially gouging an area where you got a sealing surface. So it, it should be fun. I'm going to get these gaskets installed and I'll bring you back. So I just want to show you that there so you can see where that gasket kind of sits and just holds into those same dowel pin locations and even though we know it was a factory gasket and we did compare this to our original it's not a bad idea to look over it like we're doing here making sure that all your bolt holes match up all your coolant passengers holes match up and that way you know for sure that you you've definitely got the right part but again there's the passion side gasket Again, with our writing, as you can see there, facing up. And there's our driver's side gasket. Same deal. Put it in place, get it in the right orientation, uh, and just go through and, you know, take a few extra moments and look, look through it and make sure that, uh, you know, all of your coolant passages and holes and uh, bolt holes and everything else line up. Uh, much much easier thing to fix now than when you're trying to put the uh, cylinder heads on it and put the bolts on and you know realize you got a bolt hole off or something but uh okay so now what now what i'm going to do is figure out how i'm going to situate myself in here uh in order to wrangle that um driver's side cylinder head in place but uh i'm gonna figure a few things out i'm gonna bring you back thank you much And uh, if this clip makes it into the video, then this is, this is success. If not, you'll never see it. But what you're seeing right now is I've got a board, or we have a board, 
sitting on the center of the engine valley, uh, right below where the intake would be, with our driver's side um, cylinder head sitting on it, just resting in here. So I can get straddled into this engine compartment and attempt to pick this cylinder head up and get it back down into where it needs to be and get it to rest on the dowel pins without scratching or marring up that new cylinder head gasket. But as you can see, the driver's side just much of a pain to get it back on as it was off just because of the air conditioning lines and the wiring harnesses and everything else. I, I am going to, as you can see here, and it'll look sideways, I apologize. As you can see here, I'm going to put this on without putting the heat shroud in place just because it'll make getting on the cylinder head easier. And then we'll put the heat shroud on once we have this thing back in the position. But I'm going to continue to fight with this and I'll, I'll bring it back in a bit. And welcome back. As you can see here, we were able to get our driver's side cylinder head reinstalled. You can see the board that we were using over here, just kind of wedge it at an angle, set it on top of the engine block, as you can see, and kind of used it in order to be able to lift from there over, rather than across the engine, over the AC pipes. Um, the main wiring harness, you can see it there. We just tie wrapped it to the master cylinder to pull it out of the way. And we did remove the passenger side head gasket, as you can see, just to make sure that we didn't damage it while we're in here is I literally have one foot on the passenger side engine mount as you can see there and one foot on the front cross member and uh yeah getting this thing in and out of here with the um exhaust manifold attached to it is doable but it's a pain in the ass pardon my French but uh I'm gonna continue and I'm gonna try to get the heat shield um onto the exhaust manifold at this point and i'm going to work on getting the the passenger cylinder head on next and then uh i'll bring it back and show you that piece talk to you in a bit and welcome back uh we were able to get the heat shield uh on the exhaust manifold after the fact um that was pretty straightforward uh, i found it pretty easy just to kind of drop the heat shield in from above um, edge down and let me grab the other heat shield just to kind of better explain this so if you've got the let's just say that this is the this is the driver's side cylinder head so when it was after it was on it, I found it easy just to kind of do this with it so put it down where it needed to go give it a little bit of push and was able to kind of get it to drop down uh, in place and then bolt it so you can definitely get this shield in and out on the driver's side uh, with this, uh, with it being installed onto the motor, or I should say onto the cylinder head. And let's see. So to give you a better idea of it, what I did was I came down underneath through the fender well here, took the heat shield, and dropped it down this way so took the fished it in through here through this little opening here on the side to get it in place so basically if this were the heat shield fished it in this way turned it got it to go this way and then dropped it down into where it needed to go and there's enough room between this and the the steering rack and everything else that's here to be able to do that and you can as you can see we've got the heat shield bolted back in we went ahead and put the dipstick tube back in since that top stud if you remember that top stud right there if you can see where that light's hitting it for that heat shield also serves as one of the hold downs for the oil dipstick tube uh, if you rem you should remember from the previous video but if you haven't seen it yet part of the camera work while I scoot back underneath here I'll show you where that bolts back into the block and you'll see it's probably going to be a lot bright for you but right there that bolt at the end of that light you can see the dipstick tube comes down right next to the starter here and better yet let me just let me put some light here on the subject. 
I'll just get up here and point. So that's your hold down bolt for your dipstick tube right there. And it just has a little O-ring fit that pushes it down into the block. We did replace that O-ring with a new one and put a little bit of uh, oil on it for lubrication just so we weren't inserting an O-ring dry. I will tell you that getting that uh, dipstick tube back in place is a bit of a bear because it kind of snakes around. It's bent real funky and you can see that it kind of goes up, bends, goes around the heat shield for the exhaust manifold and kind of bends itself back up to meet up with the mounting bracket on that front stud and then finally come out in the engine compartment where you can access it. There's a sensor that is right here. You can see me put my finger on it. See that red connector? I found it easier to unplug, just squeeze the two clips together on that side of that connector. Just remove the unplug that sensor temporarily. And it's a lot easier to get this dipstick to both out and then back in. And then once you got your bolt secure, just plug your sensor back in. So it's a lot easier without out without that sensor plug in your way. Otherwise, you're kind of hitting that wiring harness and you're brushing up against it. And it kind of pushes your dipstick tube out of the way and makes it a bit of a bear uh, to get it to push back down in the, into the block. But like I said, that was a pain. Yeah, there were some uh, colorful adjectives being thrown around to get that to, to line back up to where it needed to be. But uh, it's, it's back in. So we're going to concentrate back uh, on the passenger side. We're going to see what we need to do in order to wrangle that cylinder head back in place. But uh, I will say it was easier to deal with putting this cylinder head, the driver's side cylinder head, back in place by not having that heat shield in there. Just it led to one less thing you had to fight with. So we did get it installed, as you saw, with it installed on a cylinder head, albeit a bit of a pain. Uh, and then we put the heat shield on after the fact, and then we uh, put the dip oil dipstick tube back in. Uh, one thing to note on the bolts to the heat, uh, heat shields on those studs, I showed it in the earlier video, the bolt that we went with. And per the description and per the diagram, it said that it looked like it was the right bolt. It was mentioned as belonging, as being one of the bolts used uh, for the exhaust manifold to heat shield mounting and let me see if I've got one of those packages here uh, I will get one of the packages I do want to show you that part number again and let you know that in this case and this is my fault for not catching it but in this case uh, these bolts if I can find them that was the part number that we looked at earlier, if you remember when we were putting the exhaust together. That is not the right bolt needed uh, to bolt the heat shields onto the studs. Uh, a bolt that does fit it, I managed to find some stuff in the yield stash to get it to fit. It, it does thread just fine. And that is an M6 bolt. Uh, I'm sorry, M6 nut. Why do I keep saying bolt? So I had a box of these laying around. I'll just show you here. That, and I've got one of the old studs here. It's hard to, hard to do this one-handed. There we go. You can see that thread's on fine. So there's, now I just happen to have these. But these are the these are M6 serrated uh, flange bolts, so not quite uh, as thick as the manufacturer ones. But again, they got that nice serrated edge on it, which should help them bite in place and not um, not loosen up on us. To give you a comparison, that's the factory one. Factory one has a little bit more meat uh, on the shoulder, and it's just a kind of a flange nut it's just not serrated i think those stainless steel ones will do fine uh, i've used stainless steel ones on exhaust parts before as a matter of fact i prefer stainless steel if i can get it just because they don't rust uh, i did coat each one of those studs before putting the bolts on for the heat shield with a little bit of anti-seize just to help next time those heat shields have to come off 
hopefully make it a you know a little bit easier to do uh, but with that being said like i said i'm going to cut it here we're going to focus on at least trying to get the passenger cylinder head in place i uh, won't be able to torque anything down till tomorrow because if you remember we're going to use arp head bolts on these and uh uh, I read and didn't quite catch all the instructions, but the ARP head bolts come in. Uh, it's got two sizes in this kit. It's got a 12.10 millimeter and a 12.9 sixteenths. The 12.9 sixteenths are for the head bolts themselves. And the 12.10 millimeter is for the smaller bolts that go on the top of the head. Uh, which is it's kind of cool they actually sent replacement bolts to go on the top of the head as well but i'm not going to be able to use all of these because if you remember the tops of our cylinder heads and we'll show this when we get to it actually there's a couple of spots where it's the same type not this same exact bolt but it's the same type of setup where they've got a little bit of a stud sticking on top where the wiring harness gets pressed into place to hold it so if I were to replace those with these, albeit as nice as they are, then now there's no place to push that wiring harness into position. Uh, and there's some different torque specs for these ARP head bolts uh, than what the factory says to do because they're ARP. I've already emailed the uh, ARP support about this, uh, and they said to use the uh, ARP uh, torque specifications follow the sequence of the manufacturer but use the foot pounds of the way arp wants you to do it and to sh and we'll get more into that when uh, we actually go to torque these down i won't bother boring you in this video with it but beware that if you are going to use the arp fasteners they're going to have a slightly different torquing sequence than what the factory will have well, other than that, uh, I'll let you go. We'll work on getting the, work on getting this uh, passenger side cylinder head on, and then we'll bring you back. Thank you much. Okay, so the passenger side cylinder head is being a bit of a bear because of that black bracket back there. It bolts directly to the back of the cylinder head. And the problem is, unless you have it precisely lined up where it needs to drop in place, what it's doing is, is that bracket is catching and all the little bits and pieces on the back of that cylinder head keeping that rear corner from falling in place so we loosened up the two screws or two bolts i should say sorry to hold that bracket in and it gives it just a little bit of free play so we're hoping with that free play in there that we can now kind of push against it and get it to push outward and away from the cylinder head to at least long enough to get the cylinder head to drop in place um, and then we can get everything bolted up, but we're going to give that a shot and you'll see how it goes. Talk later. And welcome back. As you can see, we're doing the same thing we kind of did on the driver's side. Where we've got just a, a board kind of setting on a, on a block that's on the midway uh, underneath what, what would normally be underneath the intake. So mid center line of the engine and on the driver's side, uh, cylinder head just a, a board just balancing that uh passenger cylinder head there because 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 of these air conditioning lines and also just on the driver's side with everything kind of being in the way um it's easier to pick the cylinder head up from there and then get it in a position rather than somebody hand it to you from the outside have to you know kind of turn 180 degrees and then lower yourself in to get it in place because trying to come in through the passenger side over the passenger side fender well would be a bit difficult to do because the, the truck alone has 20 inch tires on it so it you know it's well over a, you know, about you know almost four foot off the ground to, to kind of reach over it uh to try to put the cylinder heads in place so again this is what we're trying uh like before i'm just standing inside this uh, standing inside the engine compartment one foot on the cross uh on the anti-sway bar and the other foot on the cross member and uh, I'm just going to try to reach down and hopefully you'll see in the next segment um, that we loosened up that black mounting bracket that you see in the back there because that also bolts the back of the head. It was getting in our way and not giving enough uh, clearance to get the cylinder head on that back dowel pin. So I just want to show you again, this is what we're kind of doing to hold it in place uh, just for ease of getting it in here. But uh, we'll bring it back in a bit. 
and welcome back uh, as you can see we've got our passenger side cylinder head on at this point in time and it was a bear it was a bigger bear than even putting the driver's side cylinder head on let me tell you um because we ran into a couple obstacles one as you saw earlier in the, in the earlier clip we loosened up the back bracket that your fuel line and, a, and your vacuum line and a couple other lines um, run into that actually bolts to the rear of the cylinder head if you remember when we took the cylinder head off so I loosened up the two bolts that held it to the train to the bell housing just so it would give some wiggle room and you could push back a little bit so that cleared up one obstacle another obstacle was the exhaust manifold uh, since we have it dropped a little bit since it's not attached what was happening was the exhaust manifold in the cylinder head was catching it and it would catch it and of course it couldn't lift up the collector underneath to where it needed to be so the cylinder head was stuck so you could get this front corner dowel pin seat but you never could get enough you couldn't get the right angle on the rear one uh, and the third thing we did was we removed the heat shield from the exhaust manifold. So we left the exhaust manifold on and just took the heat shield off. Doing those three things, uh, so on that exhaust underneath the truck, disconnect all your oxygen sensors and just allow that exhaust pipe to drop down. And it'll drop down below where the exhaust manifold on the head comes out. And that will allow it to basically clear and get itself out of the way so you can get your cylinder head on. The last thing that we did uh, was since this dowel pin would seat after that, but that rear one would only kind of go on halfway and it, you could fidget with it. It really wouldn't seat. I, I took it off and didn't find any burrs on it, but we did take a red piece of scotch Bright and stuck it into each of the holes where the dowel pins go in and just kind of worked it a little bit and polished up those dowel pin holes from the from the cylinder head side so from the side that that those pins go into the side that faces the block so we polished them up a little bit again removed the heat shield dropped the exhaust and loosened that back bracket up and finally with all of those we were able to get this one the seat we were able to get that one to kind of half seat seated a little bit better than before but after putting just a little bit of pressure and kind of pushing down on the top corner all of a sudden it just went thump and just kind of you know seated itself so we've got the cylinder heads in at this point we've got a single bolt into each uh top center just to hold it in place in order to use the arp studs i need and i should say we are waiting for a shipment which should be here tomorrow we need a 9 16 uh, 12 point socket, uh, which I, I don't have. I do have one, but it's not impact rated, but I, I want an impact rated socket because of the torque that we're going to be applying to these bolts. The chrome socket would probably handle it fine, but you know this was an excuse to buy some 12 point socket sets, so I took it. So once those socket sets come in, we'll go ahead and get the rest of the ARP fasteners in and get everything torqued up. Uh, in the midst of doing this, because I was shifting it and fighting with that cylinder head, uh, I did have to use our spare uh, right-hand side uh, in uh, cylinder head gasket, unfortunately. Uh, now, I don't think it would have caused a problem, but you can kind of see it there. You see where I nicked that sealing surface. I don't think it would have been an issue, and it probably would have been fine, but I nicked it there. Uh, in the attempts of trying to put this thing on and fighting with it and I want to say there was one other spot yeah there's a couple of spots here on the back where you can see that the sealant or the copper gasket underneath or the metal underneath is showing through so it may have been fine but rather than risk having to take this thing all apart again and since we had a spare gasket we went ahead and just used our spares on these ARP fasteners and we'll cover this a bit more uh, a little note comes with them what it is is that you will follow the torque sequence of the manufacturer and I did verify this with the book that I have and these numbers are correct so this is your torque sequence 6 7 8 9 10 and then 11 12 13 14 15 now these main head bolts here uh, Dodge has a rhythm where you, you do one value, another value, and I think a third value, and then finally you take them to like 90 or 95 degrees. 
uh, I did email ARP about this, and ARP came back and said, use the manufacturer's sequence, but use our foot-pound chart. So you can see what they want you to do there. So 1 through 10, you torque it to 35, then they want you to take it to 70, and then they want you to finish it off at 100. Now, interesting enough, if you watch Reignited's videos, he goes through the Chrysler sequence because he uses Chrysler head bolts. But when he takes his torque wrench after torquing, I think the final torque is like 90, 90 or 95 degrees, he puts it on foot pounds. The bolts end up around 100 to 102 foot pounds uh, per bolt. So it's, it's pretty close to this 100 foot pounds that ARP is asking you to go to. They're just not asking you to do degrees. They're doing 30, 70, and 100. And they want these top ones torqued to 28. Again, I'm not going to be using their bolts for the top because I need some of those bolts to remain studs. Uh, so with all that said, as you can see it, one final look there. We've got the cylinder heads on at this point. Hallelujah. It was uh, it was bare. And that heat shield, as you can see, I mentioned, I mentioned we took it off before. You can sneak that heat shield on and get to all the fasteners for that heat shield without pulling out the passenger fender well. Uh, I'll pull, I'm going to pull this passenger fender well out at some point anyway, uh, just to clear all the dirt out of this little trapped area down here, just like we did on the driver's side. But just to let you know that A, you can get the cylinder heads on definitely with the exhaust manifolds on it. Just leave the heat shields off. It does save you some. Um, put the heat shields on after the fact. You know, they, they can be wrangled on through the top of the motor. Just kind of, again, put them in sideways and just kind of roll them a little bit because there's enough flex. You can roll them like that to get them around and then get the fasteners in. Uh, however, if I were to do this job again, to be honest with you, just like we did on the driver's side, I would more than likely pull the passenger side fender well cover pull it out drop the exhaust first and then pull the heads out because it would would have been just so much easier to deal with that head had you not had the excess weight of that exhaust manifold on it now if this were a car that would be completely different because like we said in the previous clip um you know this truck's sitting on 20 inch tires already so you factor that along with the suspension and me even being six foot one uh, you know, the fender, the passenger size fender, with it being partially on the lift like it is right now, comes up about midway up to about my chest. So you can see how far back those cylinder heads fit. So trying to reach over the fender wells to get the cylinder heads back on this motor with a motor, with a motor being in the vehicle, as you can see, would be next to impossible. You almost have to stand in the engine compartment or pull the motor. Uh, but again, it, it can be done, but it's, just heads up, it's going to be a fight getting it out. Uh, with all that same being said, I've rambled on long enough. I'm going to cut it at this point, let my shop lights charge up, and then as long as we get our 12-point uh, socket set in tomorrow, I'll, I'll bring you back and we'll go over a torque sequence, and we'll see what piece we want to fit on next. We'll more than likely look at getting the front timing cover on next because it'll allow us to finish uh, bolting up the oil pan, wrapping up the, the that at least that front of, part of the front of the engine, and then we can start looking at getting our uh, our intake back on. But with that being said, uh, I'll let you go and I'll pull you back for the next one. Thank you much. Bye.